Hey everybody, Vaughn here with the Vaughnster vlog and it is Tuesday, May 24th. I am enjoying a cup of coffee. It's 9 a.m. so it's a little late in the day for when I wanted to be doing this and getting it done. But I am going, I'm coming. Oh my God, they are so <laughs> just like me. I'm like, hurry up, I want my coffee. There's that coming through. Everything, it's been raining all night, so it's like mega slippery. But yeah, check this. <laughs> what are you doing, nutmeg? What are you doing, chicken? Okay, let's get this set up <laughs> so y'all can see. This is my favorite view of getting to see the chickens in the mornings. Traffic. Let's move along. <laughs> yeah, ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> so we're gonna feed the bun buns. Possibly go around and get them some more lamb's quarters. <laughs> Poppy still hasn't decided what she's gonna do with her life today. Come on out, Poppy. I'm a sweet thing. Nope, she decided she's staying in. She's not having any of this wet weather. Hey, Jet. Oh, my sweet little lad. There you go. Oops, sorry, Ginger. We're over here tripping on each other. Oh, here she comes. Oh, here she comes. She gonna eat some bugs. She gonna scratch you some. She's such a good chicken. So <laughs> I gotta clean up like broken rabbit bottles. Hey, Jet. All the different things that we've got going on out here. I need to get things tidied up and get the soil turned over here too. So these big quads that you're seeing, these are the root bound remains of last year's Boston ferns. And uh, I'm hoping that the chickens will help break them down. We'll see. like hanging out here with my girls. I've got my cup of coffee, so cheers everybody. Thank you for, no, don't poop in the middle of it. Oh, bae. <laughs> no! You're such a jerk. <laughs> okay, so I just used a hand shovel to get Bay's poop out of the middle of the freaking, she's such a turd Ferguson. And then there's Poppy being dramatic in the corner. Poppy, what are you doing? You're being a chicken. She's such a pretty girl, though. I love hanging out with these lasses. Bae's having a drink. What you doing up, Meg? <laughs>
Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday. Um, I have not been vlogging this week it is because it is rainy outside and it has been raining almost nonstop since we got home. So, that being said, we are, well, we're getting the house ready for kidnapping our niece um, for the summer. And I wanted, guys, I wanted to share with you guys that I'm cleaning up my workstation because it's a disaster. Um, and so today and tomorrow are entirely just trying to get our house look like to look like humans live here. Um, we've got Maddie's room settled already. I need to dust and vacuum just one last time so that the poor creature doesn't die from allergies. Um, but we are now fully moved up. We're just about fully moved up into the attic. Uh, we slept there last night and survived. It was super humid though, but we'll figure it out. Um, but we still need to get the living room and the temple room and the, like everything. Like we're still doing a fair bit of rearranging. So I'm probably not going to be able to fit in a whole lot of crafting this week, but sometimes tidying up and organizing while it isn't being directly productive in making inventory and in preparation for Dragon Con, it is being... It's setting us up to be more productive whenever we get home. And also, I'm ashamed of my house <laughs> being a disaster. But y'all, look at that. I almost have all my beads put away in my wall of beads. <laughs> so, yay. So, I don't know if you're... Oops, kicked the tripod. I don't know if you're able to hear the rain, but it's just a beautiful rainy day. And so, I'm just going to show you guys the different charms I have. That I'm putting away into their trays with no rhyme or reason. So these are some really cute little roses. Now I say with no rhyme or reason, but I do keep all of my metal charms in like a metal charm tray. If I'm using um, glass beads, I have trays that I use with just glass beads. And if I'm using gemstone beads, I do have a tray for just gemstone beads. So, and to try to save on space, Whoops, I am putting, these are the exact same uh, charm, just in a different finish, and so I'm just putting them both in the same container. Uh, it's less than ideal, I will admit that, but it's what we're working with. Boo, and then we've got these really pretty Celtic knot charms that I think I want to try recreating with wire. Like, I think that might be doable. But there's that one, and we've got a bunch of bags of this. So I'm going to, and I'm, I'm putting all the baggies into a bin because we take the stickers off and use them to put our cabochons in whenever we upload cabochons to our website. Just kind of a way of keeping everything organized. And I had gotten these charms on AliExpress, but I'm really excited to, to see how they behave. Just popping some different things over into there. Let's see if I can't condense some of these that where I only have like one charm left. I'm just going to kind of put them all over into a one section and that just frees me up a little bit more space to do those are some cute little knots I love the charms that have a little bit of that texture of the over and under these will be really cute connectors for like bracelets and earrings and necklaces now, I don't have a whole lot of hmm, I don't have a whole lot of Charms left to be put away, so I'm hoping I can get them all in this tray. We'll see though. All these are super cute little Celtic trees of life. There's that one. And then I'm gonna move these barbs over there. Now we've got a look at these little daggers. Like these little spikes. I think those will be super cute for uh hanging off the earrings and necklaces. And I got one, two, three, and four bags of this. I don't know how many are in each bag, 
but I think 20. So yeah, a lot of this stuff is going to get put away quickly. Like the wires look like a huge mess right this second, but it's just bulky. Once it goes up onto the grid wall, it'll be look tidy. So, holy busy, busy day. Because I'm going to try to, I, I think getting the living room sorted is going to be the top priority. But we'll have to take the suitcases up to the attic. One of them's just an empty suitcase. The other one's a suitcase that has like a costume in it. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to have to scooch these little pumpkins over. I'll put the pumpkins and the turtles together. And then these are another really cute little knot that I think I want to try to make out of wire. Ooh, I used to wait here for my coffee to kick in too. This rain makes me just sleepy. Oops. Yeah, there you can see. What a cute little charm. I wonder how I could do that out of wire. Hmm. We'll have to try it out. Going. So, I don't know if you can see, if you want to back up and get this whole thing, I've moved so many plants from over in this section, and all of this vining is now just two plants. So, what I'm doing is I'm finding, like, this section of the pothos. Uh, we've got long segments of just kind of nothing going on, and all of these little nodes here are actually potential root segments. So I've just snipped it, and then I have this rooting hormone that I'm going to, well, I need to put water in this cup first off, but basically just right there on the end. And with pothos, you don't even really need the rooting hormone, but... I just, I don't want to lose that tip. And I'm just focusing on the tip parts. Uh, everything else, I'm just going to, there's so much here. So I'm just going to try to cut it back and see what happens. So that's what I'm up to. <laughs> okay, so we have the cuttings that we just took. And then we have this guy who's been growing roots in a bottle for like a year because I'm a bad plant mom. Um, and then this is the one that I'm going to be filling in with the cuttings that we just took. And then I'm going to be doing some amending to this soil to try to get it to have less runoff. So my favorite tool for this uh, is a knitting needle, a nice thick one. And I'm just going to take this and poke down into our soil. And then I'm going to take the bit of the stem and I'm just going to feed that down and in and then I'm just going to kind of fluff it in and you can see I'm disrupting a lot of these roots that's okay pothos is a very very super durable plant so I've made our hole and we are going to encourage the stem down in there and then I'm just going to kind of pack in around it and we've got one more this is a big boy nice and thick very long so I'm just gonna get it in there and then I'm gonna go like that to make space to put that in on and in. And now I am going to, you know, let's go ahead and put in this guy with the root ball. And I'm just pulling that out. I'll get all those, all those roots. Now I have successfully transplanted pothos in both ways that I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna lay this one down um, just on top of the soil. And then we're just mounding this moisture control soil on top of that. And this is a blend of worm castings, uh, coconut core, and the Miracle Grow moisture control soil that I had purchased the other day. And I'm just top dressing, I'm going to be top dressing all of my plants, all of my house plants in this mixture, just because I like it so well. And then, I don't 
don't mind a bit whenever like this one's kind of set down and taken root right there and I love it when they do that when the vines do I feel like I get a much stronger plant that way so there we are tapping all that in perfect and so now I'm going to set this off to the side where the rain can water it because just because it's a rainy day. I'm actually taking a break from the rain this minute. But I will want to make certain to water that really, really well. So now we have this guy here that typically I have this plant up on a high shelf. And hello, mosquito, my nemesis. So normally I have this plant up on a high shelf and I pour the water in and it just kind of rolls off the edges because this top soil is so hydrophobic a little bit. Um, so I'm going to see what we can do to improve that. I'm going to remove this moss so that doesn't, hasn't really accomplished what it was supposed to do. And we have this kind of dry dead soil. That I'm actually just going to mix back into the rest of the pot, like the rest of my uh, soil mix. And I'm kind of just scraping away, exposing a little bit of the root ball. I'm going to, I'm not putting these dead leaves just in case there's any diseasing on them. Um, which really, I guess I shouldn't have put the topsoil in either, but well, here we are. Just gonna pinch off any leaves that look like they're yellowing because they're not getting enough light. There we go. And so now from here, I wanna take that same knitting needle and I just want to poke holes. all the way down and in because I want our water to be able to permeate. So I'm just gonna use the rest of this root water here. But now it's just gonna soak right on in. And now I'm gonna top dress with some of the fresh new soil that will hopefully have a lot of, um, oh, what you call it? Nutrition for the plant. Ah, mosquitoes are biting me. That's all right. They're hungry too, I guess. So I'm gonna try to encourage this little bit of vine right here back around just there into the soil because if I can have more thriving plant matter going on here um that would make me really happy so again we've got this long section of like nothing on it um vine so I'm going to come down here to like this node and I'm going to just break it off I I'd use scissors but I didn't bring them out here with me then I'm going to break the vine off toss that aside and then we'll find one of the holes that we had made and I'm just gonna press that down and in and I'm gonna do that same thing because here we've got this vine that's got like hard here at the base I'm just gonna dislodge that and then come up giving myself about four or five inches lots and lots of root nodes there we go eat that and in my area pothos is not invasive at all because it dies at the slightest hint of frost so that's why we grow it and I don't mind a bit and there we go putting that in now I want to try to put it where the where it looks like it's going to be happy if that makes sense so this is kind of upside down but it'll figure its life out maybe I don't know we'll see 
You can do it, little plant. I believe in you. There we go. And then just kind of poking that soil down around the root. Then we've got one more right here. And again, we've got all this healthy here at the tip. And then like just a whole bunch of nothing. And I'm not entirely certain why my plants do that. Um, maybe that area just wasn't getting enough light is a viable possibility. So knitting needle down and in, pulling it out. Now these ones I have not even put the rooting hormone on. And I'm going to have to be diligent in the first like three or four weeks to water these almost daily. Um, just to keep it really, really nice and moist. And that will keep the plant, the little cutting that we've just done, very happy. In theory. We'll see. Okay, what do we have going on elsewhere? I'm going to move that cup. Now, and then these guys over here, they're just doing great. I'm going to leave them long. I don't think we need... Well, you know, this one's got that little section. I'll go ahead and transplant, do a cutting off of this one. Just getting all that dead leaves off. I really do think it's a light thing. If the leaf isn't getting light, it just, what? <laughs> it, it replaces it or redistributes the energy elsewhere to grow new leaves that are getting light. So always working on being a better plant mom. Coming in, giving myself enough root nodes that we can, you know, keep it happening. You know, I'm going to do this one here. There we go. Just packing that in just a bit. Because the leaves will kind of reach around and go where they're wanting to go. Looking good, y'all. What's this? We don't need that in there. So yeah, just some... Sometimes it can seem a little ruthless to be removing so much of the plant. Um, but it's going to help the plant to look much more healthy and compact. And... That's kind of what I'm going for right now because I'm hoping to be able to get nice, long, full vines this time around. Uh, but we'll keep it going. I've been keeping this same pothos plant alive since uh, 2006. <laughs> so um, it is the mother of all of my other pothos plants. And I love it. It's a good plant. It's Apophis, the pothos of doom. Alrighty, so yeah, let's get a little bit more yummy, fresh soil up on top. Even if it's just a scoop, I'm hoping it'll break down a little bit more. And I am still going to poke those holes because I want to increase the surface area for water to permeate down and in instead of just running right off. So now, still not done tidying up my jewelry area, by the way, but we are cleaning the living room and it's a disaster. Ah! <laughs> ooh, ooh, indeed, <laughs> past bond. We are all oh, little Sam dog. I want to. I want to give a shout out to everybody who's hanging out here in the premiere. So Sabea, Jax's mom, Pro, Stephanie, Lydia, some other folks. <laughs> so what we're up to is completely rearranging the living room. And it's cold, y'all. So I got my big old fluffy robe. And I'm bundled up. Hmm? Craft room. Is that what I called it? No. What I call it? Living room. Oh. Well, we did that too. But this one's the craft room. Even though we live in it. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's nakey right now. We're going to be moving some more stuff in here. But uh, yeah, we, we did finish rearranging the living room yesterday because we moved the bedroom up to the attic and then made the bedroom into a living room. And it's just, oof. I'm going to get back to the premiere though. We just finished up having the premiere and I wanted to come out and show you guys. The whole porch has been taken over by my houseplants. But look at that. Stormfront coming in. 
some dark, dark clouds there on the horizon. But, uh, oh, the air smells lovely of roses. And this guy that we got potted up, this is the one that I was using the knitting needle to do the holes. Well, I had set it right there on this plate but i guess our gutters are full or something because they're not draining properly and it just pounded like completely smashed all the soil out of that pot so i've had to retop it off but let's see how are we doing in here our little peppers have some new growth our latana is maybe going to be setting some new flowers soon it's really encouraging to see our marigolds keep growing our fuchsia's doing pretty good make sure they always come through and make sure to take off any of the little spent blooms like this one here and I just let them drop the seeds haven't developed yet and they don't survive the winter so I don't have to worry about them being invasive or anything but yeah such pretty little flowers Hmm, I can't remember what flower this is. Lobelia, that's Lobelia. It's so bluey purple, it's so pretty. Ah, and then of course the petunias. So I've turned these guys, and the petunias over here are doing pretty good. Our snake plant um, are all doing really well. And then our snake plant back into its original pot. Dumb cane arrow leaf and a peace lily with a spider plant that planted itself in there um i'm really glad to see them doing well uh all of our little seedlings doing good yeah everybody's doing good i i need to get these guys transplanted but that's gonna have to wait till we get back because between just us being busy and uh the weather and then our peperomias i need to get down there and weed that bed good grief that pokeweed and the whatever that tree is that needs to not be there the drusina is doing so well i love the peperomia but yeah just oh and these roses have been climbing i wish we had smell vision you guys because these roses are so aromatic now, whenever we had planted these, we had planted, they were such a deep, dark red that it almost looked like a black rose. And then it got trimmed uh, down past the graft line. Um, and so it's still growing back just fine, but the color's not. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Like, honestly, I probably would have never gotten a pale pink like this, but I love it. Like, it really is beautiful. So that's looking good. Our nasturtiums are growing. I haven't seen a hummingbird in a while. Um, I don't know if they just don't love me anymore uh, or what, but I'm still keeping up with cleaning out the feeders because just because I'm not seeing them doesn't mean that they're not there. And I've got some stuff over here that needs, we have two more snake plants. One of them has an aloe sharing a pot with it. And this one has uh, a pothos growing in with it, just vining down. So that's cool. I didn't know that they'd be good pot mates. But here we have another. This one has some, it was next to our glass grinder. So I actually need to go through. This is like glass dust um, on its leaves. I need to like hose this one off. But look at, that's all one plant, you guys. It's doing so good. And then we've got some more of the dumb cane with a dracaena that needs. I'm going to get in there with scissors so I'm not damaging the plant. But I need to remove all of this dead greenery. And then this one, I need to do something because it's another arrow leaf plant. It's got ants though. And you can see it's got this like spider mites, I think, that I can just rub off. I go through with um, a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol and I rub that stuff off but the ants farm it because it secretes like almost a nectar and this has this is a bunch of stuff all in this one plant or one pot but this guy is looking pretty rough so I'm going to trim the tip off 
and transplant it and see see how that goes but our succulents are doing super good this is the one that Callie completely destroyed with her butt but uh it's doing good <laughs> it's coming back apparently Callie's butt is exactly what it needed and then we've got this one's doing pretty good it's got some spider something going on all over it we'll figure that out these guys are not doing well I'm gonna try to displace the little bit that's growing get fresh soil in there that one never quite recovered from Kelly's butt, but that's all right. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We are, well, Randy's downstairs doing work, I'm sure, but I am here hanging out with my boy, my Z-Dog. <laughs> We're just uh, getting some coffee into the body before we hit the road to Tennessee. I'm so excited. Uh, we are doing a turn and burn to steal our niece uh, for the summer. And I absolutely cannot wait. <laughs> really? Come on. What? What are you recording for? Because. So I got a chicken protein bowl. I brought an avocado and some purse tortillas, and then they have some of their ranch. So I'm gonna make my own wrap. So I'm being chauffeured around by Maddie in the Maddie mobile. It's just driving, yo! Oh my god! Oh, and horses, look!
Okay. Ooh, I like that air conditioning. Oh, it's not so bad. Oh. Yo, 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 you're my Santa. I did not see Hey, baby boy. Hey, my Sam. <laughs> oh, God, Sam, are you okay, buddy? He's so excited to see you. He wiped out. It was a great day. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Come on, guys. I know it's Maddie, huh? Oh. <laughs> we'll say hey to Maddie, Sam. He's not good. Good morning, everybody. We have a sleepy kitty who wants some treats. A sleepy kitty who wants some treats. <laughs> He's a good dog, isn't he? He's a real good boy. All right, let's do this. It's raining. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Vaughn here with the Vonster vlog. And my feet are wet now. Um, we're home. We made it home. Oh my gosh. We made it home. It was only like, y'all, I didn't even drive and it was exhausting. Randy had dreams all night that, um, that he was driving. Like, so I feel, I feel for him, poor baby. Let's flip this around. Cause the garden, I'm gonna keep the camera under my hat with me. <laughs> this is the garden spot. Oh, I bet we've got some strawberries. They're probably ready. Look at all that new growth, that bright, bright green of the strawberries. I need to do some weed and we've got some nightshade coming up. Oh, I'm gonna need to get some help though to hold up the, the side. Yeah, we're gonna have to harvest some strawberries. And there's our pond. All the stuff that we've transplanted <clears throat> is blooming again. That's really good. Still some weeding to do. Oh, look at those nasturtiums. Those are volunteers. Lamb's quarter. I just pull them up like this and give them to the bunnies. Dude, I totally miss you. Totally miss you. Dude, I totally miss you all the time. Dude, I totally miss you. I totally miss you. Dude, I totally miss you all the time. Good morning, birds. Oh, it's still recording. There we go. You want some leaves? So it looks like our seedlings made it the whole time without being watered that we were gone. So I'm really, really happy with um, these hanging bags. Ooh, we got oh no. Let's see if we can save anything out of this because these guys did not make it. Oh, that breaks my heart. I've been, oh, my bachelor button, my rutabacchia. We'll see, we'll see what we can recover. Get some more. Oh, these guys too. Oh, ah, ah, ah. No, let's, okay, let's see what we can do.
so I am back out in the yard again and we had some food go not bad just a little close to its expiration date um, including some broccoli so I like the broccoli started blooming in the fridge so uh, we're giving it to the critters and we are fixing to have some storms so let's see how if we can get anything done before the rain gets here <laughs> So we've got eggshells from this morning, some Hawaiian bread that had gone stale, some bananas, some sausage gravy, some potato peels, a tomato. They love eating garbage, so <laughs> I love feeding it to them. There's Poppy eating her bread. There's Ginger being a chicken. There's Chia. She's a messy eater. Ch -ch -ch chia Ch -ch -ch chia chicken butt. They're my nutmeg and they're my bae. Well, that's ginger. <laughs> Here's bae. It's been raining so much that like, this has turned into, it doesn't drain very well. I need to see if we can get some bags of sand or something. But those Jerusalem artichokes, you can see them growing up around the edge of the bed. So there's Jet chewing on some lamb's quarter from a night or two ago. He hasn't touched his broccoli. Cersei's has though. That's good stuff, huh girl? So the grapevine is becoming unruly. I need to get it trained up under the pergola, but that is fantastic. Oh, we've got some little grapes. Starting to form. Very cool. All of the, I mean, it seems like it's been perfect weather for it. We'll see how it goes. Still no aphids on the tips. Well, let's see, maybe. I can't tell. I don't think so. Ooh, some lilies and the purple heart is flowering. Let's see if we can meander on through here. Oh my gosh, beautiful. And there's the purple heart right next to a little black walnut tree. Oh, I'm gonna have to come in and all of these morning glories are just they take over everything. So, fortunately, they aren't too hard to just find the root, pull it up. Find the root, pull it up. Some pokeweed. Eh. Oop, there it goes. And then I just light it down. <laughs> so, yeah, you can kind of see a weed, pull a weed, and you can spend all day out here, and still it looks like nothing gets done. But that's just me being pessimistic. It's fun to be out here pulling weeds, enjoying the weather. It's like it's like working on yourself. You gotta do it you gotta do it all day, every day. Uh, and sometimes it feels like you're not making any progress, but every little bit adds up, y'all. It really, really does. This mint so minty. Oh my gosh. Okay. Another little that up. Let's see. Oh, we gotta save the mermaid. The birds keep knocking her off. That fountain's just going along. That thing's still spinning with insanity. Uh, I need to refresh the hummingbird feeders. Ooh, yeah, see this one coming all the way down. It's touching the ground. So yeah, I'm gonna have to come out here with some uh, twine. Now, whenever I pull weeds, I like to lay them just right back down. Sometimes I have to pull them twice because they'll reroot. But I want all the nutrients that these weeds are pulling from the soil and locking into their greenery. I want to be able to go right back to the plants that are supposed to be here. Or rather, the plants that I want to be here. Because if you ask, yes, that piece of grass would be like, yeah, it's supposed to be here. And I'm like, no. <laughs> now I'm going to leave these little oxalis and some creeping sedum that grows wild around here. I don't know if it's native or anything, but it grows and it flowers pretty and I've seen 
sticky bugs on them eating the pollen and nectar and stuff so I'll leave them but yeah just just every little bit it's easier to get them when they're small before the roots are too developed so. then this is oh there's another miracle morning glory just pulling some weeds and those ones I am just tossing out. But, uh, whew, the butterfly bush uh, had lost all of its blooms after we planted it. But I think now that it's over its transplant shock, it is just covered in blooms again. And that, that makes me real happy. I can't wait to sit here and spy on some butterflies. <laughs> so there's those trees and mud chucks. And there you can see that's the mother plant. Whew, I still need to get zinnias planted and all this stuff. But... If it's not a work in progress, then what is it? <laughs> so, keep on keeping on. I am very, very happy to see that this fountain is still chugging along because when we came home from picking up Maddie, uh, it was bone dry and I didn't know if the motor had burnt itself out. Apparently it has not, which I'm so happy about. So for $15 for a fountain, y'all, I'm happy. Hey guys, I just wanted to thank you all so much for coming and hanging out with us in today's This Week on the Homestead video, like, update. It's just, it's beautiful out here, y'all. I'm going to flip this around so you can see my view. But I wanted to thank all of our channel members who make what we do possible. So there's the hostas growing in. Y'all's names should be going up across the screen right now. Those lilies are reaching though, aren't they? I think I need to trim uh, this bit of black walnut tree back to let those lilies get the full sun that they want. We need to burn that this coming week. I'm going to be training up the grapevine this coming week. I'm going to be harvesting and pickling some radishes. So it's going to be in next week's recipe, I think. Um, just, oh, a whole mess of stuff. I may actually even be digging up and eating some of the artichokes, you guys, because I don't know, I don't have to do some research. I don't know when is a good time of year to do that like if there's a particular time that has a better flavor but with us being low carb we're eating some rutabagas and sorry uh julia child but says it rutabaga or like i don't know we were watching one of her videos and uh it was the first time randy had watched julia child and he started like kind of teasing the way she talks and i was like don't you sass the child <laughs> not in my house um but yeah it tickles us we have we have fun with it but I'm going to be eating a rutabaga for the first time and eating some turnips, uh, which I've had turnips before, but they're cooked at my friend's house and she's a much better chef than I am. Um, and all sorts of stuff. So I can't wait to share next week with you guys. Thank you again so much to all y'all just for being here, to all of our channel members for making what we do possible. And I will see you guys next time. So until then, y'all keep on keeping on. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>